Okay, we're here for our special shear for Purim, Tavshin I involved. Purim comes out on Thursday this week. Somehow I thought that we might not be able to get the crowd together here Thursday night for the shear. Everybody's going to be doing other things, Sudas Purim, keeping happy. And it gives us a chance to do a special shear for Purim. We're going to speak to the Sivah Shalom actually has a special Sefer. Just as we had on Hanukkah, there's a special Sefer on Purim. Very Kedai, if you get your hands on it. Beautiful, beautiful things about the Yom Tif of Purim. And uh, as far as Parsha Tzav, I guess if you really want to hear the Sivah Shalom on Parsha Tzav, you can come to our Shir and our Shul, Shabbos afternoon every week, a half hour before Mincha during the summer from now through Sukkot time, we do our Nesiva Shul and Shir inside the Sefer every Shabbos, a half hour before Mincha. And that is at uh, Kol Chaim, Rabbi Farkas' Shul, um, on 618 Karanetta Drive. Okay, so here's a famous Maimar Chazal, Gemara Megillah, Dav Zayin of Abayz, everybody knows this, there's a lot to learn about Purim, but everybody knows this Maimar Chazal. And that is Chayav Inish Levesume Bepuria Ad Delo Yoda Bein Or Haman Levaruf Mordechai. A person is supposed to get, I guess we could use the word drunk on Purim, to the point where he does not know the difference between Or Haman and Baruf Mordechai. Now, the Nesiva Shalom says this sentence, this Maimah Chazal, is one of the most unbelievable things about Purim. Because we've discussed over the last few years and we've, we've talked at length about the lofty and unbelievable opportunity and the unbelievable day that Purim is. And we've discussed them over the past few years and we've said one thing after the other about what could be accomplished on Purim. And the day of Purim is possibly the greatest day of the year. It is extremely, extremely full of Kedusha. And there are so many great things that we could actually accomplish every minute of the Yom of Purim. It's also, we mentioned that Purim is also like the day of Kabbalah's HaToyra, where Kla Yisrael, after Purim, was Mechabah the Torah Berotza. And we know that when the Torah was given by Har Sinai, so Chazal tell us, Kof Aleim Har Kigigis, that the Har Sinai was sort of held over their heads, and he said, listen, either you're going to accept the Torah, then fine, and if you're not going to accept the Torah, then Shom Tehei Furazchem, over there, under the Har Sinai, under this mountain, that'll be the end of Kla Yisrael. So whereas Kla Yisrael said, Naza Benishma, Chazal tell us it was sort of a bit forced on them. But when it came to Purim, and we say in the Megillah, Kimu Vekiblu Ayyehudim, so we learn from there, Kimu Masha Kimu Kvar, that Kla Yisrael was Mechabal, the Torah now, the Ratzoy, the Simcha, that which they had already accepted at Har Sinai, they now accepted the Ratzoy. So Purim is, is even, could even be more than the day of Kabbalah Satayra by Har Sinai. Also, Purim, we have the Indian of Mechis Amalek. It's the opportunity, it's the day we lay by Yavoy Amalek. Um, by the Kriyas of Torah on Purim. That's another an additional thing that we have on Purim. Purim is also, add on to that, we keep adding things because we're, Purim is also a great day of tzedakah. We have a halacha called Apoishet Yad, anyone who reaches out his hand to collect tzedakah, no yisnuloy. We have a chiyot, we have a mitzvah to give people that stretch out their hands for tzedakah. So I've just mentioned to you numerous things that make the day of Purim an extremely high and holy day. So doesn't this, all that I just mentioned, doesn't it require Yishev Hadas? Doesn't it require concentration? Doesn't it require preparation? How do we reconcile that with what we just said? Chayev Inosh, Levesume Bipuria, Adaloyada. I mean, we just said so many things. We should be thinking every minute about how we're going to raise our level on Purim. It should be an extremely, extremely serious time, asking the Siva Shalom. How do we, how does this jive with all the things that we just said about Purim? So the Siva Shalom tells us an extremely important thing, 
And for some people, it might be a little dis- disappointing, but it's a very, very important thing to know about Purim. And this is the Nesiva Shalom. He says that this Maimar Chazal, Chayat Inash, Levesume, Vipuria, Adalo Yoda, he says, take notice. It says, Chayat Inish Levesume, Vipuria. A person is Makhliyev to, so to speak, get drunk, Vipuria, on Purim. It does not say, Levesume, Bayayim. It doesn't say that a person has to consume and imbibe and to get drunk on wine. That's not the Lush of Chazal that we're saying over here. What is it telling us, says the Nesiv Shalom? It's telling us that anything that you do on Purim, it needs to be for the purpose of what? The purpose of getting drunk with the actual idea and the day of Purim. In other words, it's such a spiritually high day, high day, and it's such a day that we can reach such heights that it should excite us so much that we should just be drunk with the idea of how much we can accomplish on Purim. Sorry to disappoint everybody with this new meaning of Chayavim and Nishlam Asume, but this is what the Nesiva Shalom says. The Nesiva Shalom says that, that we, we just can't even fathom what we can get on Purim. So that's it. Chayav Inish Levesume Vipuria. We have to get drunk, so to speak. We have to get so excited and drunk on this idea of what this day of Purim is. It's a once in a year opportunity, and you should be so enamored and so consumed by what Purim could do that you should actually be high from the feeling of this opportunity. And it's amazing what you could accomplish on this day of Purim. And we need to contemplate and appreciate what that is. We need to contemplate and appreciate it and think about it beforehand and prepare for Purim. And just remember, says the Siva Shalom, you know, now that we mention what a person could accomplish on Purim and what is our obligation really to accomplish on Purim, the Siva Shalom says you need to remember one very, very important thing, that the Yetzirah knows this too. And the Yetzirah wants one thing from you on Purim. And the thing that the Yetzirah wants from you on Purim is, you, is for you to miss this opportunity of Purim. In other words, to think, the Yetzirah wants you to think that the minute it comes to Purim tomorrow night, that you already have to be stone drunk and out for the day. And that's exactly what the Nesim Shalom says. That is exactly what the Yetzirah wants from you. We just mentioned to you how you have to be drunk on the idea of what you could reach on Purim. That Purim is on the level of Yom Purim. It could be the holiest day of the year. And that is, it's very, very scary just to think, for the, for the Yetzirah, it's a very, very scary thought that he can lose you on Purim. You could go up so many levels and all the things that the Yetzirah, all the tightest and enticing things that the Yetzirah throws your way the entire year, he could lose you on Purim. Because on Purim you could take advantage of that opportunity to grow. And it's a day that we have to grab onto and we have to grow on Purim and we have to change from Purim. So you know what the Yetzirah does? He says at all costs, the Yetzirah wants you to miss this opportunity. And that's why you see some people who are really thinking rational and uh, smart people, but when it comes to Purim, they miss the opportunity. How could it be such a tzaddik, such a masmid, such a someone who sits a whole year and learns and everything? I'm not, I'm not telling people that they shouldn't drink on Purim. This is not the purpose of this. The purpose is, is what the priority is. What's your focus? And it's the Yitzhahara who wants you to be totally out, drunk, vomiting on the couch, thrown out on the porch. He wants you to do that as early as possible. So you can miss the opportunity of Purim. And the Siva Shalom says that we need to take out of Chayev Inish of the Sumi Vipuria that so many times, the Siva Shalom says another beautiful vart, another beautiful thing what we need to take out of this Maimar Chazal. So now we know how we have to prioritize and we know what we have to accomplish and we know where our mind has to be. And he says like, you know what? People sometimes have a difficult time understanding the ways of Hashem. We have a hard time understanding why Hashem does certain things. We have a hard time understanding when we look at people who are, who to us and to our eyes, they seem like such good people, they have difficult times. And we see people who, it might be obvious to us, although you can never tell people, that people seem like they're not such good people and they're, they have just the best time in the world. Everything seems to go right for them. We don't understand the ways of Hashem. And we, we don't understand why certain things work and certain things don't. 
And in Sivashon it says, on Purim we allude to this by not knowing the difference between Ur Haman and Baruch Mordechai. When we come to Purim and it tells us, you know what it's telling us? It's telling us we see things with our eyes. We actually don't know, we actually don't know where the good times and where the salvation and where the Yeshua from HaKadosh Baruch Hu will begin. You know, the Purim story, the entire Purim story tells us that we never know where things are going to turn around. From the depths of what happened, Purim, that it was a gzair on Klai Yisrael, and from the depths of where they were, about to wipe out the entire Klai Yisrael, what came out of that? Kiddush Shemayim. And you know what? It was the same in Mitzrayim. Just like the, from the darkest time of Mitzrayim, from the darkest point of Golos Mitzrayim, all of a sudden, it turned around. And from Haman, what came out from Haman? Kimu v'kim A Kabbalah satayra like we never had before. In other words, we think sometimes that it's an Ur Haman type of day. It's an Ur Haman period of time. It's an Ur Haman type of situation. And we don't think that there'll ever be a Baruch Mordechai. And it comes on Chai Vinish of the Sumi Viporia. We have to have such a Muna and such belief in Akadish Baruch Hu that we have to get ourselves to the point that we understand that there's no difference. Our job is to realize there's no difference between the Or Haman and Baruch Mordechai in our mind because Akadish Baruch Hu has a plan for us. HaKadosh Baruch Hu has a plan for the world. HaKadosh Baruch Hu has a plan for every single thing that goes on. So where during the year, we look at things with our eyes and we think we understand everything, but we know that we really don't understand everything. It comes to Purim and we say, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, we understand it's all about you. It's your plan. And from the greatest depth and from a person being, and Siva Shalom says this applies on a personal level too. Every person, you might think that you're so down and you've gone so far and you've done so much this year that you can't do tshuva and you can't possibly bring yourself back up. You think you're an Or Haman. No, says the Nesiva Shalom. On Purim you realize that we don't know, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu could, you, a little effort that you give, HaKadosh Baruch Hu could turn it around in a second. From Or Haman to Baruch Mordechai. Chayev Yedish Levesume Vipuri Adleyada Bein Or Haman to Baruch Mordechai. Let us use this Purim to grow, let us use this Purim taka that should be different than any other Purim, and we should raise our level. Let's get drunk on the idea of how much we could accomplish on Purim.